Now let's go to the next tier. That's the running backs in the 25 to 36 range. Jake, I know this is uh, <laughs> this is kind of your bread and butter. Uh, give me some guys you like in this tier. Uh, similar to Sean before, like I want so many of these guys in this range. Uh, the big three that stand out to me are Henderson and then the teammates from college rookies uh, and Williams and Carter. But I'm going to save Carter for later and I'm going to go just right back to the first one I mentioned, Henderson. Uh, Emery Hunt, who I've known for a while, I think is one of the best scouts in the business, if not the best. He coined a phrase and he calls it smooth brain thinking is when, you know, because the ridges are supposed to be where your thoughts and the synapses are and all that type of stuff. So smooth brain is you're not thinking. So for this entire time, we're sitting here and like Daryl Henderson's an amazing talent. If he could just stay healthy and then we head into this season, it's, hey, Daryl Henderson is one of the best backups to draft and he could even have some standalone value if they unleash him this year and all that. And then Akers goes down and instead of everybody just immediately going, well, Daryl Henderson time is here. Finally, Daryl Henderson. They're like, well, maybe it's Xavier Jones. Maybe it's Raymond Clay. It's like just you, the answers in front of you. Daryl Henderson, if healthy, is a terrific talent. Is he somebody that can be a 20 plus touch per game guy? No, but neither is Austin Eckler. There's a lot of running backs that are in this mold where they can do very well in a 14 to 18 touch range. And I think that's Henderson's bread and butter. And if just healthy in this offense under Sean McVay, with everything we've seen what this team can do for even aging, broken down running backs, I think Daryl Henderson, if we see what we, I, at least what I expect in the preseason, by the time we get to the end of August, I have a feeling he's going to be inside the top 20 where he deserves to be. Yeah. I love Daryl Henderson. We'll talk more about him, but, uh, uh, Jake, was that it for you? Uh, just Henderson? Yeah, I, I want to save. I want to save Carter for one of your questions later. Uh, <laughs> just, I, actually, I don't have Javante Williams for a later one. The, the quick version on that is when they drafted him, I said by week six or seven he should take that backfield over, similar to Miles Sanders' rookie season. Uh, Melvin Gordon's opened that door even more by waiting this long to finally show up. So Javante Williams might actually be the lead option. Be hell, I, at this point he might even be the lead option by week one. Yeah, uh, love Williams as well. Love all those guys, so uh, we'll get to them. But, uh, Sean, who are you targeting in this RB 25 to 36 range, a.k.a. the RB 3 range? Well, I, I mean, Jake stole my guy. It's it's all about <laughs> Daryl Henderson here. I mean, how could you not? His ADP really is closer to, you know, RB 22, 23 range. Um, I mean, when I'm projecting him right now, I'm factoring in that they will add a veteran running back like an Adrian Peterson or Duke Johnson. Um, and I'm still getting him RB 21. And so far the Rams have hold true to their promise. They haven't added anybody. So if he goes into the season as the lead back, I mean, he's going to be a steal at this price. So, um, you know, looking back at last year, he was the RB 17 weeks one through eight, um, even when Malcolm Brown was healthy and Cam Akers um, was in and out of the lineup. So, I mean, he already flashes upside and, you know, this offense should be a lot better with Matthew Stafford. So, you know, he has some more touchdown upside um, in this offense. So you can't go wrong with Daryl Henderson, even if they do add a veteran, like he'll probably still be a low end RB two. So I, that's why I think it's, he's a safe bet right now. Um, the other guy is probably Chase Edmonds. Um, th there's a little bit of risk, you know, James Conner could inherit the full Kenyon Drake role we saw last year, which will hurt um, Edmonds upside, of course, but James Conner has never been able to stay healthy. He's already dealing with um, setbacks with his um, offseason toe surgery so you know like if he only ends up playing six or seven games this year Chase Edmonds is going to hit at this ADP at uh, RB27 so I'm um, you know well it's well worth taking a few shares of Chase Edmonds here I think he has a ton of upside he's shown in the past you know when he's the lead back he can put up serious numbers you know pushing RB1 upside and the depth chart behind James Conner is pretty much nil um, so I love taking a swing here at Chase Edmonds. Yeah, and Edmonds has been running as the number one running back in camp. That was a role that they kind of earmarked for him, and they were going to give him the first crack at it. Um, so I, I think Edmonds, he's a guy I was really high on before they added Connor. I've kind of tailed off a little bit. I, I think the time to get Edmonds was like way early. But uh, I do think there's kind of some post-type appeal now because this is another guy that – could is setting up to be a lead back on a pretty good offense. I mean, this Cardinals offense is pretty good. Same reason I like Daryl Henderson. I think, uh, you know, when you look at Henderson and, and look at what the Rams have, you know, they have 
uh, a better quarterback now than, you know, a quarterback that's more comfortable and that their coach is more comfortable with. Um, so you're going to get some more deep shots. You could, that could set the backs up for more touchdowns. Um, and I really see it hard to believe at this point that Xavier Jones, Calais, Jake Funk, any of those guys are going to steal significant snaps from Henderson. Uh, you know, he's been uh, over 15 carries uh, four times last year. The, the Rams number one running back, uh, it was right around 15 carries for the year. So um, you give him a couple catches on top of that. And uh, this guy could really be a, a strong value considering the offense that he's in. So I uh, love Daryl Henderson. I, I, I'm i kind of with you guys. I don't even know why he's, you know, this far down in ADP. I know fantasy pros kind of aggregate, so you can't really uh, filter by date the way you can with some other sites. But uh, 25th is too low for Henderson uh, I think he is a top 20 back and uh, Michael Carter. That's another guy that I really, really like, um, you know, Jake, I know you're going to talk about him later, but <laughs> just a guy who uh, we talked about a little before the show, you know, started Aaron, he, he's been running with the, the ones all camp. He is a, a guy that can play on, on rundowns and pass downs. He was in the, you know, top 10 percentile in, in a lot of grading metrics by PFF in terms of receiving last last year uh good you know one of the better runners in, in his class as well and and really you know from all the reports and, and I know it's puff piece season so I don't take these uh you know I take these with a grain of salt but I but glowing reports but I think the important thing is that the reports have been that he's running with the ones and there's distance between him and those other guys, you know, Tevin Coleman, Ty Johnson, LaMichael P. Ryan. So that's what you want to hear. And I think this, because it's an unknown with Zach Wilson, uh, you got Elijah Moore in this, this whole new receiving core, basically, uh, outside, of cor- uh, outside of Crowder. Um, uh, people may be shying away a little bit, but I, I think Michael Carter could be essentially the centerpiece of this offense that may not be terrible. And even if, you know, the jets may just be a bad team. And so um, I think that will help him because he'll be, I think he'll be out there for some, for a good amount of receiving snaps as well. So really like uh, Michael Carter in that, in that RB three range. 